Guys, I'm with Mr. Bob Dylan. We are at San Jose Gurdwara. Um, Mr. Dylan, first off, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I want to say Sasarika will explain exactly what that means later, but thank you guys so much for joining us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do uh, two parts. First, we're going to you know, talk about uh, Mr. Bob Dylan. I want you to introduce uh, him to you guys. I think you know he has a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge that a lot of you guys uh, uh, can learn from. And the second half, we're going to keep it very basic, um, talk about Sikhi, a little more Sikhism uh, 101, and give you guys a nice little tour of the Gordwara, San Jose Gordwara, um, Mr. Dylan, his team, the community, uh, put so much work into this. And I believe the story should be told. But before we go into that, I want to introduce you, uh, Mr. Uh, Bob Dylan. Um, Uncle G, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, so I wanted to give you guys a little background. Um, so Uncle G, first of all, school. Well, let's go way back. Uh, grew, grew up in India. Came when you were 17? Yeah, yeah. I came when I was 17 years old to U.S. Okay. Uh, I finished uh, equivalent to high school. For the 12 years, which is actually 10 years of high school, two years of uh, college prep. Mm -hmm. My my uh, my Tosha Tata from Jalandhar just joined us right now. Tosha Tata Ji Sashigal, thank you for joining us. Uh, speaking of uh, Parent Akuji, what where exactly were you from? For those who don't don't know, where, uh, where in Punjab? Rajasthan, uh, District Ganganagar. Uh, District A lot of people know that as Bikaner, Bikaner division of mm. India used mm. to be. Wonderful. So, but there are a lot of Rajasthanis uh, in the San Jose right now. Uh, but when I came, there were not uh, yep. that many. And then for them on Facebook, hopefully, hopefully they can hear us. Uh, if we could just do our best, Uncle G, I should have. Should have mic'd you up one day. Uh, but uh, yeah, so just to go on that, so a typical American dream where we're so uh, lucky. Uncle G, you went, went on, came here for the first time, went to San Jose State University? No, actually, I, I came to uh, Idaho, Moscow. Oh, wow. University of Idaho, Moscow. Which weather over there is? Really, really different. <laughs> yes. I was used to. Then the Bay. <laughs> yeah. So I came to California to work in the summer mm. and never went back. They loved it, right? Yeah. I always, I was telling my my wife's from Elk Grove. You know, when we go to Yuba, right? Yuba just had their Jalus. Yeah. Um, I say, why did so many people, you think, you know, choose Sacramento, choose San Jose? But if you look at like Yuba City and you look at Punjab's weather. Yeah. The weather is the same. Identical, right? Identical. So we feel at home. Um, a lot of, when we think back to Cesar Chavez, a lot of people forget. A lot of Filipinos did a lot of farm work, often forgot of. Uh, you came in the summer just for f hard, hard farm work as well. Yeah. A lot of six were farmers, right, from the yeah, very beginning? Yeah, it was easy easy to get a job. Uh, plus, I had, a, had I came from a farm, so I knew the farming, so. Hundred percent. That just came naturally. Absolutely. And then, where did uh, where did you go first? What town? Um, Delano has a lot. All of Central Valley. U Yuba City. Yuba City. Yeah. Okay. Yuba City. Yuba City is where you went first. Yeah. And then, how did you end up at uh, San Jose State? And then one of my friends used to be uh, in San Luis Obispo, and then he transferred over here to uh, San Jose. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and that's when you finally got your first taste of, of school uh, since, right? And uh, you study business administration? I initially was uh, engineering. Okay. Uh, so I, I took uh, industrial technology degree, but the name was also changed to industrial administration. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. What made you choose that? Um, Farm boy to industrial. <laughs> you know, industrial engineering was kind of an interest to me right from the beginning. You know, 
lifetime studies and all that. Mm. So uh, I, I thought from the perspective of uh, getting a job back mm. in India, mm. India was getting industrialized, so I figured I should do industrial engineering. It's bound to happen, right? Yeah. It's bound to happen. I love it. But did not know that I would never go back to India. <laughs> well, now, now, now our job is to visit, right? Yeah. Uh, visit and do it for fun. Uh, and then uh, you, you did get, go for continue your education, went yeah. into... Yeah, then I uh, went into MBA. Uh, I got MBA from Santa Clara University. This is 1973. Yeah. And... Uh, did you follow the same uh, pursuit there at Santa Clara? Oh, that was the MBA was business. Business. That was business. mostly business industry. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And then for those Silicon Valley uh, entrepreneurs who don't know, uh, then you started working for. Um, I want to say it correctly. Is it Amdal? Amdal Corporation. Amdal. Amdal. And were were they a subsidy of IBM or? No, no, the. It, Gene Amdahl uh, quit IBM and started his own company and was supposed to be the fastest computer, uh, faster than what he had done at, at IBM. Amdahl's law. So it was Gene. It was Gene. It was Gene Amdahl. I, I looked that up and I, I put a question mark. Was it Gene Amdahl, Amdahl's law? Because Wikipedia, that uh, Amdahl's law, you'll see... Um, I have no credentials to talk about it, but it basically talks about latency and being able to do uh, one operation at 10 times speed. Am I correct? Uh, Please correct you me if I'm wrong. I, I don't remember those kind of statistics, it's, it's nice. but it was a very fast computer compared with what used to be at IBM. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, I mean, some of the computers that we used to design that biggest computer, mm -hmm. Uh, is, is actually uh, now uh, our, our uh, uh, iPhones are more powerful right, right. Than, than those computers. Memory is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. I remember seeing a picture, I think it was 1950s, but it was like one gigabyte something of an IBM, and they're literally taking it, loading it off a truck. It's like this big for a capacity uh, so small. So if you're just... Be a, 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 just the room size right. uh, computer. Yes, yes, yes. And now things are getting nano, yeah. smaller, smaller. If you're just joining us, uh, we're Mr. Uh, Bob Dylan. I wanted to introduce you guys to, to him. And then the second half, we'll give you a tour of uh, San Jose Gordada. I'm grateful that Mr. Uh, Dylan kind of took us under his wing and um, the main goal in that second half is going to be just to try to educate, give you guys value for those who don't know um, about uh, Siki. A lot to say on that, but let's um, let's finish up with Mr. Dylan. I know there's some type of knowledge, some type of uh, much, much wisdom that uh, he can give to you and that I'm looking forward to uh, as well. So then you become a, a Roman. My, my, my thing, of these, I was working for a solid-state drive company, SSD memory, which is kind of the, the second after hard drives. Yeah. Um, I'm sure uh, you're aware for five years, Travel the World was their spokesperson. And then, as I was explaining to you uh, er, uh, earlier, then, um, you know, naturally got into real estate and helping the parents out and now a realtor as well. You were, sir, and continue to be a very successful realtor for about 25 years. Uh, Years is that yeah, yeah, correct? Exactly. What 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 made you kind of transition after uh, Amdal? Did he eventually sell his company or? Uh, no, it went public. Nice. Uh, when it went public, uh, I made a little bit of money. Nice. And uh, so with with that uh, real estate around me, mm -hmm. the home that I had bought timing was was very much appreciating. Mm -hmm. And so interest in the, so the real estate, I got interested in real estate. And uh, after quitting Amdahl, they just got full time into real estate. And now you had that chunk from uh, Amdahl going public. Why not utilize this in the best way I can for myself, my family, my future, right? Right. Um, That's what I did. Wonderful, wonderful. And then for... We have a whole different range of audiences. I have a lot of cousins in uh, Vancouver who are um, not major home builders, but small home builders. I think it's important to give value, be 
uh, transparent. Um, so then I think most realtors do end up becoming, you know, they know the trade so much, small home builders. Uh, you kind of uh, went on after that, or did, it, did you do it simultaneously, started to? No, after, after buying and selling and, and selling to, to the clients. Serving others, yeah. So serving others, and then I uh, got interested in uh, building from scratch. Mm -hmm. So finding the land that uh, was part of the real estate, mm -hmm. and uh, then my nephew got a partner with me, and we, mm -hmm. we started building uh, homes here, two homes here, and three homes here. Mm -hmm. you know. Two different worlds? Yeah. Being a realtor, actually building? Yeah, and building, but then selling so mm. that was still that you still have day. to have that yeah after yeah, after right, being built right. for um and, and you've been doing that for quite a while now uh any piece of advice you can give for um let's say right like i give you an example my cousins in vancouver who are doing the same thing you know they're building three houses at a time brand new models we sell them from your experience um any type of advice that you can give to them get a nephew make him do everything if, if, if you you need to understand the market, uh, right. you know what it would uh, eventual eventually sell for. So you need to know the market, and obviously you need to know how much it's going to cost you to build. So mm. uh, if you build it quickly, uh, then you come out uh, okay. Sometimes the building cycle is too long. Mm and the market changes in the meantime that you can get stuck with the home that you built and you thought you would make a lot of profit but you, you don't, don't right and that was actually gonna be my next question is how important is time management and budget in that situation then you just answered it, it is it's everything important. yeah it uh mr uh, bundle Jordan's brother cam just joined us uh, Chetan, actually, give me your, your phone number. So th thank yeah. you to him. Uh, that, that put him on that. So so wonderful. As we were talking uh, about that, you served some time. The list goes on. You should see on his resume the amount of commissions, the amount of selfless service that he's done. Uh, he's at Union High School District. Um, and then you were also on, on many different uh, commissions. So the biggest advice, you talked about appreciation. Um I know you're not a financial expert analyst. What are your thoughts about the way that things are uh, going on, right? They say you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards, Steve Jobs would say. And all those concerned people are, uh, you know, we're getting ap appreciation, appreciation, 2000 crash, 2008 crash. Uh, we're almost long overdue for those worried it, it, it's really I, I don't think uh, uh, in, in this valley you can call that a crash but uh, it is a True. cause and uh, values have been going up and they will continue to go up because of the, the there are lots of jobs in the valley and people are moving in by 2040 uh, the predictions are that uh, population is going to double right and uh, the land is very scarce and so planning uh, has been to growing vertically rather than uh, mm -hmm. sprawling because that sprawl costs lots of money well said. for the services. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're 100% right. I'm, I'm totally wrong in that. I wouldn't say uh, crash. I would say correct, right? A cor correction yeah, that yeah. that's going to occur. And then to Uncle G's point was when you're crash or not, up or down, I'd rather be in the bay, right? Yeah. When be in the center of everything where yeah. you can rebound from those type of... Uh, Lots of jobs and uh, people uh, want to move in. Right. I can uh, uh, agree more. So now the uh, questions, uh, just some random uh, life uh, questions. I asked you one, what, you know, to switch from the builders one piece of advice for uh, realtors. Two completely different worlds. There's still the service, like you said. You still have to sell it. Um, looking back, if you can give one piece of advice for anybody who's starting out, you know, a real estate uh, agent, uh, they say more than 80% fail in their first year or give up. Yeah. Uh, 
in, uh, invaluable so, experience. So my, my advice, anybody who wants to get into, into the real estate service business, you really have to uh, focus on the service. Uh, what um, a lot of people do is uh, they worry about the paycheck. Mm. They were used to getting every week. Mm -hmm. And they don't, uh, they worry too much about uh, that whether this escrow is going to close or not, whether I'm going to get paid or not. Right. Uh, so if you focus on the service itself, and the client, yeah. everything uh, works out. But if you uh, try to change strategies to close it faster because you want a paycheck. Chasing the money. Yeah, you know, chasing the money. It, it doesn't work. So you really need to focus on the job that you're supposed to do for your clients. I and, love it. Uh, the service. Know, sometimes, uh, you know, you spend a lot of time, but you don't make any money. Mm. But still, you need to uh, make them happy. So they refer you to other uh, friends and relatives. Uh, that's the only way to build up real estate. One hundred percent referral business. Yeah, it, it is not a one-shot deal. You anybody should look at. And that's that's the thing. Everybody wants the shortcut, yeah. right? The yeah. easy answer. I want to go into real estate because I'll make a lot of. Uh, money I, I want to do they, they expect it to be a walk in the park i've had uh, a few top producers uh, on this show and they 100 percent agree as well it's funny what happens when um you give selfless service and you put others yeah. first right uh it's amazing what could happen and, and that's what really made me go into it um i, I never I considered you myself a salesman yeah a lot of a lot of people are very very pushy and they, yes. they, they sell hard I was a very soft seller, yeah. uh, so I try to fill the need of the people. Uh, Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, I try to give them according to more my thought than, than their own thought, which mm. was a mistake. Mm. But so you need to listen to the client and understand their need and just uh, fill their need. Focus on their need, their yeah. goal, right? right. And you're saying mistake was that you sometimes your thought you want to be honest, transparent with them, yeah. even if it goes against their needs. But at the end of the day, looking their need. It, more, looking more, back, yeah, more, more from my perspective that this is you shouldn't do this, you should do this. You know, mm. so, but at then, the end of the day, you gotta make just make sure they're happy. Yeah, yeah. right. That's a tough. Yeah fine line i'm sure and that's what i've been struggling with is i think playing the long game the long run they'll respect me more later if i'm uh honest you know and transparent yeah, yeah. but in the moment again at the end of the day customer is king right uh yeah. and you have to almost and that's the thing is even if you know what's wrong you want to warn them if they're family you you have to be able to say okay my job is to serve you i'm going to serve you but i'm just telling you right my yeah, thoughts yeah. uh i think that's that was great advice um we're almost there, actually. So another uh, one is, uh, this one will make you laugh, is you can go back in time, time machine. You're 25 years old. You yeah. get to see Bob Dylan looking at Bob Dylan. What do you What do you tell him? What advice? Uh, no, in, I, invest yeah. in Facebook. <laughs> you know, the, uh, uh, my people gave me, my friends gave me, my name to be Bob Dylan mm. is because he's a very popular singer at the time. I see he still is very popular. And because of the difficulty of pronouncing my full name, Bupinder. That's my wife's name. They, 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 that is? Yes, yeah. Oh. It's, a, it's a unisex name, guys and girls at Bupinder and Milk. And yeah, 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 right, right. So they, they figured I should be called Bob. They said, okay. <laughs> I like it. It's tough. Uh, but but going back to the time machine, you're looking at Bob Dylan, you go back in time, you're 25 years old, mm -hmm. if you can tell yourself one piece of advice, uh, what would it be for the future? Oh, uh, what, uh, what other one mistake I did mm -hmm. was I learned uh, real estate uh, totally on my own by doing it. I became, because I was a college graduate, 
I could get a broker's license directly. Mm. And I thought, uh, I, and now I figured that was a mistake. It took me longer mm. to learn the ropes on my own, with my own experience, mm. than if I had joined some real estate firm and uh, worked initially with them and, and then start my own company. That's amazing advice. So, some uh, so, some of the brokers are watching this. As I was trying to wrap my head around everything, I'm just I saw one big thing was, and with Aprene they can understand. Again, they're following the the money, right? I could start off. I can go with my uncle who's a broker and Tracy. He'll do 50-50. Why not go with him? Forget about Keller Williams. They want much less commission. Again, you're fo following that but i told myself no uh who's the best which was yeah. keller williams los gatos uh for me and to not be in a hurry and understand that um after two years if i went with uh whatever uncle when i'm a broker on my own yeah. what type of skills have i learned what knowledge do i have to yeah. now start my own business the answer would be zero so i think that that would be that's great advice and i was kind of glad it took so long because I'd rather take less pay and then now when I'm out on my own, I've gained acquired the training, the skills at a place like Kelly Williams, Las Gatos, where they're the best of the best. You know, they have mentor programs and uh, yeah, there's less money. But again, are you yeah. concerned about the money or do you want the knowledge and yeah. skills of that? You need the knowledge in order to make more money. So you can, by working with others, uh, you, you, you can gain that knowledge faster. You know, and uh, one one thing that again answers my next question, I would say, how was how was a failure or a parent failure set you up for later success, or do you have a favorite failure of yours? I think that was probably it. What you would tell yourself, right? Yeah. Um, is uh, uh, you know, don't go direct to broker nowadays. Only the only way you can do that. You before your time, it was if you had a bachelor, you can become straight direct broker. Now it's the only way to jump that is if you uh, are a, an attorney, if you have a, um, you, you pass, you pass the bar. They update the rules all the time. I'm sure you're aware. So basically, if you pass the bar, uh, Kelly uh, Chaudhary is uh, an attorney. Um, she, when she starts, she can go right in to um, becoming a broker. She doesn't have to do the two years. Oh. Um, the only other way is if in undergrad you had some type of real estate specific major. Yeah, there, there are certain um, real estate courses they, they had to be taken. Correct, for the first two uh, years, yep. Yeah, yep. Uh, to, and a college degree, then, then you could go directly from a broker. I, I, I'm not uh, up to date what are the latest requirements uh, right now. Got it, got it. So we got, we got three, th uh, three more. Um, the. The one thing is, before I asked about the Indian athletes, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, what was the most worthwhile investment you made? And it could be an investment of money, time, or energy, or some other resource. Uh, looking back, and, and how did you decide to make that? I know I'm throwing some tough ones. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think time-wise, uh, uh, some people want to take a shortcut, but I think a college de degree mm. uh, Your education, yeah. is is important. It uh, it may seem it's not directly applicable to what you're doing, mm. but it gives you the confidence and uh, the base. So, so so your base is, is, is and and you are confident about what you're doing, and uh, so that was well worth spending several years just to get a degree and uh, MBA degree uh, was another uh, my ambition was that maybe I will get into management mm. because of the MBA degree mm. and uh, it, in the, ni the nine to five corporate world yeah, management yeah okay. so uh, I, I, I did get into management but it wasn't totally because of that degree mm. And then in the corporate world, I didn't stay very long. Mm. So, you know, became my own broker. So yeah. Been a, been Two a completely broker. different worlds, right? Yeah. That was at the very top of my list was there's some kids are doing that, and then there's some kids who are in the startup world, right? Nine to five corporate, kind of like Amdal was. Yeah. Um, that was completely, completely different from that. I was going to ask you if you had any advice from that with the 
startups. But at that point, you were just following Amdal. He left IBM. You're going to leave IBM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just uh, uh, by joining Amdal. <clears throat> At that time, I was strict to the to get a job. Right, that was the job of first one since being uh, you know in the, the farming fields, right? Oh, you know, you had just finished San Jose State. Yeah, you were back from Cuba. San Jose State. I was going to Santa, Santa Clara State University, and so uh, that was just to get a job. Mm. And but uh, the environment uh, in a startup mm. uh, is different than uh, some of the structured. Old companies, right? And uh, so, how so? More fast pace? It's, it's more fast pace, most informal. It's, it's not uh, that much uh, bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah. You know, more on the line though, too. More, yeah. more risk. And yeah. it's, it's, if, if you can do, you mm -hmm. can get a job. And it's not oh, you have to have this degree in mm -hmm. order to get this job. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not that kind of thing. Wonderful. So this is kind of switching. Uh, Gears, uh, there's no right answer to this, but I just want from you and your personal opinion. I've done a lot of case studies on this. Of why do you feel you know, that, as far as Indians, I told you about, you know, I played basketball and was an athlete, but I've always wondered in my mind, why do we not see as many, not just in India, but even in here, um, as many, you know, Indian pro athletes, Olympic athletes, um, and again, there, there's no. <coughs> Right answer, but I just wanted to get your thoughts, knowing you, you know, you grew up. Uh, there and... I, I think uh, not enough athletes, good athletes in India. Mm. Uh, that's just you can blame the system's corruption. Corruption, yep, that was uh, number one. But why not enough athletes in U.S.? I think that, uh, the Punjabi community, Indian community, is uh, all these. Still, uh, first generation now is becoming a second generation. Mm -hmm. In the second generation, we will have a lot of athletes. I love it. Because I agree. People who were not born here, they had, they were more focused on uh, surviving, on putting food on the table, and, and and making uh, money and uh, buying homes and. Yep, I agree, and the the parents in that way, right? I, I yeah. completely agree. And in my case study, it was, it was yeah, number one corruption. If you're looking back at India, forty percent of you know when you look at India as a whole, even second most populated country in the world, forty percent still in poverty. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, um, and even even the the uh, athletes uh, beyond high school, you know, they, you have to have some influence in order to get up there. Mm. And uh, so I think that's going to be on us too, yeah. guys like the first generation who are out there. Like I know some martial artists who've done very well, and now they're holding their camps and opening up their gyms in Vancouver to do the same and uh, yeah. and offer that base, right? Um, yeah. And I th I think we did pretty uh, good. Th thank you for your your, your patience uh, on that. Um, now before we start walking and ta uh, talking. Uh, let's talk about where we are at, for those who don't know. The largest Gordara in North America, uh, yeah. square footage-wise. Uh, I remember the old Quimby Gordara. I spent a lot of time there, yeah. a lot of which, uh, you know, uh, football and basketball back yeah. there. And, and people, when they see this, eventually they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't imagine what was that journey like. Obviously... We had a huge team behind us. It, 85 that opened? 85, yeah. It opened in 85. And so uh, how did things get to where we are now? Well, and actually, uh, I mean, 85, we incorporated it. Uh, then 87, uh, we had that one little uh, church that we bought on White Road. Mm. And uh, a year later, then we got on to Quimby, and uh, two and a half acres, then another two and a half acres. Where was the uh, church, the one that you guys bought before that? The one Quim uh, before Quimby on was a white road. road, white and... Well, that's white and Quimby, it, oh, okay. it, that still is there. Uh, church of, church of God. Uh, yes, 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 yes. It, it's, uh, is it across from Carl's Jr.? Is it more of a, uh, I think, Vietnamese... Uh, type church uh, yeah, there, so that's where it originally was. No, no, no. It's on. Uh, it's oh, further to the right, north of, uh, north, north of. Uh, uh, 
could be. Okay, okay, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. It's uh, behind the Walgreens. It's more of a yeah. uh, family yeah. type play. That's pretty big. Right. Oh, and then that's attached to the back fence of now I got it. Yeah. Uh, so it when was you... half an acre. Oh, first half an acre, and it was I think twelve hundred or fifteen hundred square feet. Okay. Building. Yeah, that's not, that wasn't yeah. big at all. Yeah. And then obviously, but the community was small then as well. The community was small, but as soon as we had a place to assemble, right? You know, the community started growing, mm. and the community started showing interest. You know, so there was bought for four hundred forty thousand dollars. That's what it's about. I have a photo. I think it was nineteen twelve or nineteen fifteen of uh, Stockton Gordona. And people think, you know, we all came in the 70s, but we were here a long time in, in the yeah, Bay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's a beautiful thing when I get to see yeah. uh, that. So, okay, obviously not an easy road. Yeah. So, not an easy road. So because I was in real estate, that was one of the reasons that we did not stay at Quimby Road. We had a plan to build on the five acre that we finally had accumulated on Quimby Road. Where you're at there. Uh, where the good was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, because I was in real estate, I was just looking for all whatever is available for sale. Mm-hmm. So I ran into this 40-acre parcel and uh, for about the same price that we had paid for two of those parcels was available. Mm-hmm. So immediately I proposed to the board that uh, we should not build on that five acre, we should build on this 40 acre. Mm. Uh, Which I mean, might take longer, but you can you yeah. can wait it out, right? You got all the time yeah. in the world. Eventually, eventually, we will have a better... And population's going to go up. Yeah, population. Community's going to grow. And uh, most of uh, Sikh, Punjabi Sikhs, you know, they came from, uh, they love land, mm. so they can see the value, you know, why... We did buy 40 acres for the same price that we can sell. Mm. We bought five acres for. Oh, wow. You know, so Interesting. The only reason this uh, 40 acre was available for that price was because, uh. because of the housing moratorium they had put in this area. Okay. And so, so quickly, the question was how to make this deal happen. Mm. You know, they had not even paid fully for that uh, five the, the current, years. yeah. So then we came up with a scheme to borrow money, not have people donate, mm. but borrow money from them mm. at eight percent, nine percent interest. Rate. Interest to them, so okay. Whatever they were making in their savings account, mm. we will guarantee them mm. that much return on their money. Mm. So we borrowed a lot of money, almost two million dollars. Uh, mm. So all, then, co- all community funding. That's what I love. Yeah. So so then we were able to close escrow on this, and we were uh, still occupying Quimby Road for the people, by the yeah. people. And now your focus so, is the second half, just building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then it was Planning. the question of building, and uh, the guard was really helpful. Mm. You know, there was a lot of resistance in uh, getting it built here. And during that time, the that five-acre property was appreciating. Mm. We bought it for two and a, uh, $2.2 $2 million, mm. uh, or $2.1 actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, what year was this we were time? able to sell it for $10 million. Are we in the 2000s yet? Uh, We're close to the late nineties. Yeah, no, no. From the late nineties, we are, we are all the way up to. We had closed the escrow, mm. and, and then we had part of the uh, lawsuits mm. that we had in, in ninety between ninety five and ninety nine. I, I remember going through that Mount Pleasant area, and I had moms of my friends. They didn't know I'm sick, and mm. just hearing uh, them say, uh, you know, they're trying to build a. A Muslim mosque there or something, that big yeah. thing. I said, actually, you know, I, I'm sick. It's actually yeah. a Gurdwara. And, but, but what changed for her, and I, she was probably pushing harder than anything, was we educated. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. As we start to take this walk, that's what I want the, the main focus uh, to be is I believe I always put it everywhere. Education is the key to the change of perception. And mm -hmm. the only way you're going to change the way people think, right? And I remember the 2000 days of, of uh, people assuming we were Muslim and my grandfather who's in there now walking around being, you know, afraid. But before I go on that tangent, I want, I want you to be able to finish your journey, <laughs> the story. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah. So, so a anyway, uh, so in... Uh, we was we were we had started uh, we had taken a loan on on that other land mm -hmm. two and a half million dollar loan mm -hmm. on uh, the community on our land mm -hmm. and so with that money we started to to grade the the the, the land here to In build Murillo, the, yeah. the the build the first so two floors. now now is Gurdwara Road yeah yeah now Murillo <laughs> Avenue became a Gurdwara <laughs> Avenue yeah. wow how far you come right. Yeah. And how long uh, would you say from uh, the first grading to inception and the doors opening? We opened up in uh, the 2004. Yes. First, first three buildings we opened up in 2004. Mm. So it took, you know, good five years mm. to build. For what, for what you guys created? Too bad, right? I put one question down as you never know who's watching. It could be somebody in, in Australia who's trying to build a Gordwana themselves and it feels so good for them to hear you guys talk about your journey. What is some advice you would give uh, to, to them? It took you guys five years to create this. Stay close to your community well, we, leaders. Yeah, Stay they, involved. What, what we did uh, uh, different than some of the other Gurdwaras uh, around in the in the in the area and in the country, is that we had a master plan for the entire 40 acres. We built it in stages, but we had it planned for the whole site. So we built it in phases, but you had a master plan? For, for somebody who has no idea, yeah. uh, could you elaborate on the master plan? Most of the, most of the people, uh, they will go ahead and build a, a small hall and then they'll they'll attach a kitchen to it. Then they'll add some more rooms to it. Try to get all their permits later. Yeah. So so in in that piecemeal overall design does not come out that good. So if you if you just see what how big the site is and you master plan the whole thing. Go start from the finish line down to yeah. the start. And that Eventually, way, yeah. what would you want to have? So that's the master plan. There's no surprises. There's yeah. no, everything's up front. Everything is, is on the paper, designed, and but then it. you can build it in phases. I love it. I love you know, it. So, so that will be my advice. Oh, that's you save so much time. Save, save time, save money too. Mm. Uh, and the overall end product comes out to be mm. very good. I love it. Yeah. See, that tidbit right there could have helped somebody somewhere in Germany building. I saw Gordon in Thailand, too. I met the, yeah. uh, the owner uh, the, there that got that all done. But that's wonderful advice. Lundi. But it might get loud. It's Wednesday night. Uh, before we start walking, for those who don't uh, know, re real general, real quick, Siki uh, 101. Uh, first off, uh, what I was talking about is I'm very proud of. Oh, did you see? Is it Fresno who did the sick campaign recently? You know what I'm talking about. They basically put um, a lot of money towards more social media type uh, ads, and it's just general knowledge. I am a sick. I am a no, sick. Right? No, that is done uh, from Washington, D.C. Uh, D.C. And uh, Fresno area is just uh, adopting it. First. Adapting it and pushing those those ads that they're designed by a very specialist uh, mm. uh, campaign company. It sounds so small, and, and so, but for anybody who's listening, I think that's so powerful. Yeah, yeah, it is. For the guy who is living under a rock who has no idea, that's not right, right. Punjabi. Because then when if somebody's having a conversation and somebody says something, they say, no, 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 they're, no, they're not. They actually believe in equality. They're actually monotheistic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, They're actually, right. but what's what's different? It's just simply awareness, right? Yeah. So, so you know about myself. You know, I actually have not had any formal education in in Sikhi. Mm. You know, I, I say that I learned it by through the process of osmosis. 
It's okay. Same here. Living. Same here. <laughs> living in, in a Sikh family. Your father and mother. Father and mother going to Gurdwara mm. and picking a little bit here, a little bit there. You know. mm. And I went to school in a, a more Hindu uh, environment. Interesting. Because Raj- it's Rajasthan, Rajasthan yeah. you know, they then half, uh, half sex, half uh, non-sex. Right. You know, so. And that's a beautiful thing. Tomorrow, I'm going to attend a talk at Stanford uh, from a lawyer. Maybe it'll be interesting. It's only one hour, two hours, but um, kind of more focused on the 1947 partition and what she or he still feels is legally possible. Did you hear about this? No. Okay. Um, but uh, that's totally okay. Uh, like I speak Punjabi, but not Dungi Punjabi. I don't expect you to be uh, in an expert, but just for the plain Jane simple, um, you know, around 1500s, our religion, fifth largest religion in the world, we're, we're monotheistic. We believe that, you know, there's one God. Uh, please feel free to, to stop me yeah. as well. Um, and, you know, uh, I think the biggest thing, and you guys are going to see the Gurdwara uh, right now, everyone is welcome. Um, yeah. uh, longer, we love all, feed all, um, and if you're ever hungry, you'll see some pictures. You can always come up. You'll be welcomed here at the San Jose Gurdwara and uh, with open uh, arms. But um, you know, I'm not an expert e- either. But uh, essentially, if I could um, sum it up, you know, of our our history around 1500s, uh, Gurunanik founded right our religion. Right. We had. Ten gurus, which you could think of them, essentially, guru means teacher, um, essentially as, I don't like the comparison of, of Pope, but one thing that was in my mind is after the 10th, uh, around the 1700s, 1800s, uh, we stopped and then chose to uh, write a scripture called the Guru Granth Sahib, which you guys will see uh, in a second, and our very last guru, Guru Govind Singh, um, wrote, helped to write that, it was a compilation of all that. Yeah, yes. Actually, all the first five gurus uh, 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 contributed more to the Granth than uh, mm. the tenth guru. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so ninth guru did. Uh, but, I remember uh, now. Most of the contribution is by the by the first five gurus mm. uh, to the Granth, and uh, the tenth guru put it all together and uh, gave it a guruship mm. to the Granth. I love it. And he actually, I think it, it was the climate of Guru Nanak in 1469 versus Guru Gobind Singh was completely different. Guru Gobind Singh it was very war stricken, right, at that time, and yeah. a lot of conflict between Muslims, Hindus. So fact check me on this, but I believe because, you know, so many Guru Granth Sahib's were being burned and so forth, Guru Gobind Singh Ji actually uh, recited it from uh, memory, right, to have somebody write it as quick as they can. I might be wrong right, right, uh, right, right. Ab- right. Ab- about uh, that, but um, you know, other than that, you, you, there's so much information out there, and we encourage you guys and welcome you guys to learn more about Sikhism, learn more about Sikhi. Uh, Sikhi means a learner, disciple, right? Of disciple. Us, right. disciple. Um, it's, a, it's a way of life. It, it is not only uh, to be practiced, but it, you've got to be lived. You know, uh, truth is That's the, perfect, the perfect. basics of it. That, and but truthful living is uh, about the truth. You know. So. That uh, as a perfect seg- segue, the three very summarized pillars: uh, Nam Japo, Kirit Karo, and I said right, Vand. Sharing, sharing, Shaku. With others. sharing with others, and so the five thieves, the five virtues. I'm going to talk about the five virtues, which is you know, truth, contentment compassion, humility, and love. That's the way of life of someone who is sick. And oftentimes, and you see Uncle is wearing a turban, um, really, if you had a defiant turban, it stands for, would you agree, justice or integrity of all those combined? Uh, turban, uh, I would say it is to... Uh, the 10th Guru did that to distinguish, so, so you look Sing to and distinguish. Core. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, and you stand out. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so, if you do a good deed, uh, everybody will know that's the sick doing a good deed. At the same time, because you are a sick, you are not supposed mm-hmm. to do anything bad. Mm-hmm. You would, that turban there helps uh, also. Right. 
Right. Uh, and uh, the five Ds, the complete opposites, is you know to do do your best, to stay away from uh, you know lust, anger, greed, attachment to material things or people, and then ego and pride. Yeah. Right? Ego is the killer of all yeah. relationships. Uh, I think I think that w- was amazing. One last thing is when you look up karma. Different religions have different views of karma. I loved ours, which kind of almost has to do with the kitty that farming that this life is likened to a field in which our karma is the seed we harvest exactly what we sow yes. no less no right. more so essentially what you put in is what you're going to get out and uh i'm researching that and that, that kind of touched my heart that uh that's absolutely true right yeah, yeah, about, yeah. about yeah. life uh, so we have i want to say we're not completely done yet now all we're going to do is we're just going to take a very simple tour i'm going to try to stay close uh to mr bob dylan and he's just going to explain from kind of a a pov point of view of give you guys a little tour of the gordavada if any of the you who are interested um we more than welcome everybody to come uh, uh check it out and if anybody who's watching wants to get involved wants to donate wants to support uh where do you recommend they reach out to you. Yeah, How do they? We, we have it, uh, donation system on the website. Uh, Sometimes uh, it's not uh, not working, but <laughs> it's being worked on right now, as we speak. So San Jose Gurdwara's website, San they can go right through there. Website, you can donate there. And of course, if you do come to visit, you know, uh, you can donate physically. Uh, there are people to take your donation, give you a receipt for it uh, mm. almost uh, all seven days a week. Right, right. Um, wonderful. So now, guys, I'm going to save this on our other camera here. Let's take a, uh, a quick uh, live tour of uh, San Jose Gurdwara, and I'm going to try to stay close to um, Mr. Bob Dylan as he uh, explains. So bear with me. I save this precious gem. I've done this before and never saved my. Uh, th- Can you believe, uh, Uncle D? That was uh, fifty-three minutes. Felt like thirty. Fifty-three minutes. We just talked. It felt like thirty seconds. Yes, of course. Yeah, and then I'll. And I love putting in. And we're still live, guys. I love putting in a. A ticker symbol which kind of gives more information you know and and following up and I'll be sure um, to do that as soon as this saves we're gonna keep on moving so right now we where are we right now we're in the conference room of uh, Marana Ranjit Singh what was the name of the conference room right that you guys named this I believe I saw that above <laughs> This is uh, right outside the main uh, Diwa Hall. So now we're heading to the very front. That's where we'd like to start. Right. And usually the most... Uh, Beautiful. Oh. Sanity. Priceless. Like, you guys are welcome to come up here just to see the view is unbelievable. You'll see people typically Sundays uh, around noon, right? Which is when we gather... Um, Wednesday nights as well. Is there a particular reason? Not really. There is no particular reason why Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, midweek, that's <laughs> probably the reason. Yep. So people can come after work. Right.
But I like the idea of starting from the very beginning of the front. I had this painting up in my room. It means it means a lot. I mean, so now we're going to start from the very beginning of the front, but we're documenting. <laughs> Uh, so right now you guys are looking at explain it to us Uncle G basically so, the entrance, right? No, this is the this is the entry building. And that's where uh, most people will enter it from this side. And uh, usually Nishan Saab is in front of the Gurdwara. What it? Mm -hmm. so, and these fountains are, uh, are not working at this time, but the water fountains. And the waterfall, you know, very enjoyable when you, when you uh, come to the Gurdwara. It's absolutely beautiful. And, and as you're coming up the parking lot, there's layers of fountain that we won't show you now, but I want to give you guys a quick shot of this beautiful view and again you heard the story earlier of the two parcels the the uh was it 40 acres total yeah this this part was 40 acres uh well actually it was a 60 acre but Merillo was uh Merillo avenue was cutting through it right and so we bought everything east of Merillo, which is a good what i do now uh, 40 acres east of Merillo. It all started with a vision, right? And then... Yeah. Now you have And, and we ended up with this uh, waterfall because we had to terrace the the, the, the uh, sloping land. And rather than having a big drop here, yeah. you know, we made a waterfall. The waterfallers. Yeah. Adapt. Just yeah. figure, find yeah. a way. Okay. So now, now we're going to start from the point of view of your guys' next uh, visit and... Uh, now these uh, lights are only put on du during the Diwali and uh, Bandi Chod Devas and, and Guru Nanak Dev's birthday. So most of, the, most of the time of the year uh, you don't have these flickering uh, lights on. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, so now we're entering so in just as you guys this, are. This entry building has got doors on all four sides of it, indicating that people can come from all ways, from all directions. Mm -hmm. You know, the same is uh, true about the uh, uh, Ramandar Sahib in... I was going to say, the Gold, Gold, Golden Temple, the same Golden way, Temple. all four heads. Right. So you come here and you... Men shed their shoes and the women shed their shoes to the right. Yeah. And this so is... Take their, instruction. Take their shoes off. Only other thing in, in this first story is uh, the shoe rooms, the bathrooms, uh, and uh, uh, the exception two offices. And upstairs we have uh, a museum, eventually a museum. Right now it's a multi-purpose room that's you. being used for uh, a kind part and uh, and other. Smaller. I absolutely activity. love the idea. So upstairs is going to be essentially a museum sick history. Right. Yeah. Educate. And you can see this indicating God is one. That's so beautiful. Oh, honestly, Uncle G, I, I never even noticed the Ekon God. Yeah. And Ekon God means God is one. Right. Until now. <laughs> beautiful. Uncle G, give me. One second, hold this for me. This uh, Ramal is too small for yeah. my head. Yeah. 
Hello, Hello. 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 And this is where you will This is where we keep all the the head covers. Yeah, you can put so the head cover. Right here would be uh, clean yeah. for wash. You can hold on, Jack. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to put mine for wash and grab a bigger. Most of, most of them should fit the most of the head. A special big head. <laughs> Yeah, doing. maybe, maybe that's the way to do it. Smart guy, Ron, smart guy. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. This is awesome. So, if Eli, who's listening, would come, this is where he could find this, or if you're a female and you didn't bring a scarf or something, uh, you could use this, because uh, generally, we cover our head before we go into shoes off, wash your hands, right? Yeah, yeah. This is so. So this kind of gives you the uh, the overall campus uh, north hall, you know, on on my on my left, and south hall on the other side. The art gallery upstairs, and now we are, we'll be heading to the main divan hall. And there are sounds that goes out of work. Perfect. Yeah. Let's carry on. So we're we gonna shed shoes maybe closer to the uh, closer to the divan panel.
So we saw the Gurgaon Sahib, now we will be heading to where usually right after uh, people go to uh, eat, correct? Correct? Uh, right. Guru's Langar, also the Langar Hall. This over here is smaller, uh, Gurdwara? That, that's the North Hall. Uh, okay. I mean, the, the, the South Hall the North Hall. The, originally, when we opened up mm -hmm. in 2004, those one three buildings were there, and mm -hmm. we were using one of them. The North Hall and the One Hall, and we were using South Hall. P and Mr. Mr. Bupinder Dillon, meet Mrs. Mm -hmm. Bupinder in the Let's hall. <laughs> uh, Papa is sitting to your far yes, left. Yes, I saw him. Are you going? He's ready to go. Okay, we're going to look at the Lunger Hall and then we'll okay. be all done, okay? So the South and North Hall were done later. and No, they, they were done first. Mm. This part of the building was done uh, later in 2011, and all those three buildings were finished in 2004. 2004. Yeah. Uh, I took note of this as well. So the solar the system. Solar system. Yeah. Yeah. Solar system is this plus everything on the on the roof. 
So amazing. all the electricity that we use is 100% uh, solar. That's amazing. You guys did a great job. Yeah. So this is one of many parking guys, but what they did is they utilized just like Eastside Union High School District did, has yeah. been doing recently, solars yeah. on top of all parking structures, and then as well as on the uh, uh, the, the, the main Cordillera building. Um, so I'm sure they're at a point now where all electricity is running. It, from, it, it from is solar. all free. It's all free. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. This is the walk to the Langer Hall. It's a little dark here. It's labeled Lunger Hall. That's how the building. So here at the longer hall, the same rules uh, apply. It says the sign here is please remove your shoes and cover your head before uh, entering. Uh, you'll also see this infographic that's been around that I'll, I'll put a picture of after. Uh, for those of you guys who are you know, worried or nervous like many of my friends are when they're attending a, a wedding, this kind of uh, is a great go-to guide on everything uh, you need to know. It says uh, feed your body. Feed your soul. We've done feeding our soul. Uh, this is the area now where uh, we feed our body. But I'll take a picture of this for more detail for you guys. And it kind of tells you exactly what to do in basic. Move your shoes, cover your head, wash your hands, and uh, you know, dress modestly. So now, Mr. Dill is going to show us this. The uh, Lunger Hall, a quick shot of it, and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. Um, which I think was a great tour. Sasigali. So North Hall is being used for more appetizers for weddings. As a standing area. Oh, so actually, either the full meal or appetite, whatever they feel like. This is the donation box. Yeah, this is the donation box. So, uh, we can we we can feed uh, you know thousands of people. on the floor. All food is cooked by the, the assistance of the volunteers. Uh, we have two employed everything else is the of the volunteers. It's wonderful. We got two two kind of two kitchen two families can cook you know, on this side and then there's another kitchen on the other side. Great big big walk in cooler cooler and storage space. Okay. I think that was wonderful. We're gonna conclude this but we'll have everything else edited and light up. We just wanted to say uh, goodbye and thank you so much Mr. Dylan for everything. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>